Hello, and welcome to the update for the Ship Genetics Index Review for September 2021. I'm Gus Rose, the manager of Ship Genetics, and I'll be telling you a bit about our index review and what we're planning to do for indexes into the future. So we did a review of our indexes to find out how you and your clients use indexes and how we can improve the adoption of indexes from Ship Genetics. So during this, we interviewed about 60 people from within the industry. And we also surveyed breeders at the regional forum to find out how you use indexes, some of the things you want more information about for indexes and how we can get more people using the indexes within the industry. Our general findings were that we need to update indexes more regularly so that any changes we make aren't are big changes, they're more gradual changes. And we also need to educate you and give you more information about how we create indexes, some of the assumptions behind the indexes and how you can use indexes. We found that the biggest demand for updates were in the Merino indexes. Um, at the moment, we found that they had the lowest adoption through the people that we spoke to in the review. And there's also a strong push to include wrinkle in indexes and something for resilience. So our plans for indexes in the short term, this year we're working on updating the Merino indexes and we want to include the new reproduction traits, which are conception, the size and uterine ability in these new indexes. We also want to include wrinkle in all of our new indexes, plus DAG and in indexes if they're relevant to that production system or environment that those indexes would be used in. There was also lots of interest to include resilience through condition score in the indexes. So we're also incorporating those into the indexes. We're including birth weight in new and all the terminal indexes for the next year's release. We also want to include the new reproduction traits, conception, litter size, and neural inability in the maternal indexes. Our future plans for indexes are to update maternal indexes next year, terminal indexes year after, and then go on a three-year cycle to include the update indexes from then on. This means that there'll be a regular update of indexes every three years, and that update could mean just looking at the economics and the prices that we're using to come up with the economic values and wages to put on traits. It could be including new traits which have become relevant and been used a lot in the industry or that we want to encourage people to use in the industry, or it could be a whole review of the total indexes and change. So if we do these updates more regularly, then it makes the change a lot easier to handle for you and your clients which when it comes to phasing out the old indexes, we found based on your feedback that you do want some time to adjust, but not too much time because that also creates confusion. So for example, next year, when we release the new Merino indexes, we'll release those alongside the old indexes for at least a year to see how adoption's going and then phase out the old indexes. So in terms of creating the indexes, we use your feedback, which we got from the index review, which was great. We also use the Meat and Livestock Australia and Australian Wool Innovation Strategic Plans until 2030 because they have a goal in terms of what the industry wants. And that's based on a lot of consultation with the industry as well. We also look at the consumer requirements in terms of what our consumers want from the type of animals that they produce from. So for example, based on these strategic plans and what our consumers want, we still want you to be producing productive and profitable sheep for you and your clients. We also want the products to be high quality, which that means from wool and from meat. But also we want them to be healthy and have really good welfare. And also we want them to produce on farms which are sustainable. So these are some of the things we've also considered in updating the new marina indexes, for example, to include some traits which, which will help those so how do we actually come up with the weightings for the traits in each index? We do have a model of a farm, which puts a value on each of the trait based on how much value are on the actual production system or farm that they're managed in. We also use desired gains, which is for traits which are difficult to find the economic value for, such as wrinkle, for example, we can put a desired gain on that, which means that you put a weighting on it to try and get a response in it. And then you can compare that to those traits which actually have a value on them, for example, like clean fleece weight. And we also look at the 
meat, wool, and feed costs, and we look at the changes in those over time and the relativity between those, which is important. We also look at actual commercial data from some of our clients to make sure that the model is relevant and the outputs are actually going to be relevant to you and, and your clients, which is another phase that we'll be doing with the Merino Index, which we can get your feedback from and input if you want to. So the new Merino indexes from the review, we came up with four different production systems or farm types. We have the high rainfall wool type of system, which can handle worms and flies, which would include DAG, and also include reproduction and lamp survival through uterine ability. Our low, medium and low to medium rainfall wool type of index or production system would focus on using easy care to manage and easy to manage animals focused on wool production. So they would still include wool, five diamond and condition score, but not necessarily as much emphasis on WEC and DAG. A fast growing Merino, which would be a bit more similar to a dual purpose index, would be focused on meat production and easy care and also on earlier growth. So instead of focusing on yielding weight, it would focus on post weaning weight. Also, our ultra fine index would be focusing on fine and sound wool. And this was a bit of a bonus index we were considering to, to create because there was some interest in this index. And we are aiming to include wrinkle in all of our indexes for our release next year. So if you're not recording wrinkle, make sure you get into it and get amongst it. So our timelines for this, we've identified those production systems and farm types broadly based on the index review and then feedback from our regional forum and our service provider network. We're also at the moment developing the models that we need to produce those indexes. And then after that, we want to get more industry feedback and consultation about the parameters that we might use in those indexes. Then we want to finalize those indexes. And then as I said, release them alongside our current indexes to give you time to adjust. So in terms of our index review and what we plan to do for the future. We have a big focus on how to guide the industry into producing a type of animal and the products that our consumers need and what we're aiming to do until 2030 in terms of our strategic plans. We wanna give you more information and make it easier for you to understand these new indexes. And we also wanna make sure that we're updating indexes more regularly. Thank you for taking the time to listen. And if you have any more information, please contact us at Sheep Genetics. Thank you.